In this video, I'm going to take a look at credit risk modeling. Uh, I'm going to use material from chapter one of Loeffler and Posh. This is a very good book. It has a lot of VBA code. Um, I won't share the VBA code that's in this uh, textbook for obvious reasons, but um, I will try to replicate the results in our studio. So we will use some Excel uh, numbers and estimate a, a credit risk model using Excel, but we will verify the logistic output in our studio. We won't use the VBA code uh, from this textbook, but I do recommend that you uh, obtain this textbook and uh, get uh, there's lots of interesting snippets related to the VBA code. So just to take a look at the idea here, um, uh, frequently in the literature, uh, references made to Altman Z uh, credit score. Normally, that involves taking uh, again this material is from Wikipedia, but we look at factors. Altman Z uh, wrote a paper in 1968, and it related to how to address credit uh, risk and using accounting ratios to make predictions of financial distress or bankruptcy. Um, so a Z-score was developed where the uh, pertinent factors were working capital to total assets, uh, retained earnings to total assets, earnings before interest and tax to total assets, market value of equity to total liabilities and sales to total assets. And in the Leufler Posh textbook, there is uh, data, some sample data relating to 4,000 observations. And what we have are various records of zeros and ones, where the zeros denote no bankruptcy and one re relates to bankruptcy. Uh, predominantly, you find one towards the end, so predominantly uh, bankruptcy in those observations towards the end, otherwise mainly zeros throughout this data set. And then otherwise we have the varying columns with the accounting ratios, working capital, total assets, retained earnings, total assets, EBIT to total assets, market uh, equity to total liabilities, and sales to total assets. Now one of the obvious things to do here is if we were uh, trying to model a relationship between variables and an independent very uh, independent variables and a dependent variable, we would use Linest. Uh, if we ran Linest uh, in Excel to get an OLS estimation here, we would uh, input in Linest uh, open bracket identify the relevant uh, y values. And that will go up to C4100. Uh, and then the X values, the known Xs, would relate to uh, D2 to uh, H2. H4100 and then we would have, do we want a constant yes we do so we would put in true and do we want the other statistics we would put in true and we would close brackets and if we just enter then we get some output here but not enough we only get the output for a few variables that wouldn't be sufficient we only get the output for a single variable and that would relate to the last uh, column here in our data so this what we're trying to do here is model default predict default using these uh, accounting ratios. We're using <coughs> an ordinary least squares model here to predict a zero one. That's probably not appropriate, but as a first stab, uh, something that we could try. So um, if we want to get the full sequence of figures here, we would probably go across the all the uh, variables include in a constant and then target I think there would be five six rows down and um, come up here to the function command and then shift 
control enter and that would populate right so what we have would be the coefficients so if the co here we have the coefficient labels going across underneath the coefficients of the ordinary least squares model and then we have the standard r and we would have the r squared and the first cell r squared which is a goodness of fit it's very very low and then to estimate the t stats very simply we take the coefficient and divide by the respective standard error and we'd get the relevant output okay so um <clears throat> in addition to that i've also put in a model fit and that's fairly typical and what i've done here is i've multiplied the relevant coefficient the constant and the coefficients by the respective variables now interestingly with linest in excel the order of the variables becomes reverse so what was first becomes last and what was last becomes first so what was last was sales over total assets that then becomes the first uh, coefficient and the second last one was uh, market equity divided by total liabilities that becomes the second last and so on and then at the very end here we have a constant okay now we can verify that in our studio and um I'll just get the results to show that okay so what I've done here is I've opened up uh, credit risk uh, in R and I've based the the code here is going to be based on uh, Leufler and Posh and just to make sure that the data that I'm going to read in comes from the uh, source so it's from the same uh, folder as the uh, R script is here so first of all I have to attach uh, my data so maybe I'll just clear out here the data set that I have and I'll clear out this uh, probit logit uh, diagram we don't need it for in this instance and I attach the data and if we have a look okay that didn't work let's pause what I've done here is I found a CSV file where I uh, inputted the data from a Leufler and Posh uh, so let's just uh, importantly you must set the working directory in my case the R file is the R script file is in the same folder as the um, as the data so we then attach the data by reading in the CSV file with that name and then that should appear in the local environment it's there now we can inspect in the R studio viewer and we have the default uh, output and then working capital total assets uh, retained earnings total assets and so on so we go back into our credit risk uh, model I've attached the data and then we can say why uh, is uh, we attach default just to Y and then the X is the independent variables that we mentioned before and we can summarize and we can look for the y's the minimum is zero the maximum is one that's what we would expect for the default data and then the summary axis there's a variety of independent variables and we find here we have different minimum maximum so on uh, you can inspect those uh, we can look at the uh, number of defaults there's 72 defaults there was 3928 uh, cases where there was no default and then in terms of a ratio and uh, 98% there was no default uh, 2% approximately there was default okay so to run the regression OLS regression uh, very simply we use the LM command here and we run and then we get a summary of that and we can copy that and paste and compare them to the output from the Linus function okay so I'm just going to copy this I'm going to go back into Excel and then I'm just going to paste underneath the R Studio here we have the output for the model and we'll just do some preliminary checks to see is are they co cooperating so the intercept is the same the uh, working capital the total assets is negative 0.028 that's fine the retain earnings to total assets zero 
0 0.076, so it's the same. EBIT 4303432, but then one that looks fine, uh, five rounds up. Uh, market equity to total liability, uh, same number here and same. So it looks fine. What about the R squared? Very low, uh, 5959. Uh, zero point so five point nine percent uh not much explanatory power okay so what i did then uh with the linest here uh i set up a model fit purely by doing what by taking the respective variables here coefficients here uh by taking the constant so we start with P5 and then plus O5, O5, and we multiply that in turn the O5 by D2. So D2, what was first becomes last, what last becomes first. And across, and what we can see is when we go to further down, we, we always multiply. So we have a kind of a sum product here going on, and then we're adding the constant. And that is what's producing here the model fit. The model fit is basically a prediction. Are we getting a 0 or a 1? Is this a good uh, model? Is OLS a reliable model to use when predicting zeros and 1s? One of the difficulties is here the uh, we have a non-linear type output. And just to demonstrate that a little bit in theory if this was an extremely good model then the maximum i'll put in a maximum here maximum would be equal to one if i took the maximum of this column of output it should be either equal to one not more than one at least close to one we only get 0 0.543 uh, 5.4513 that's a maximum that's not extremely good um, and then what about a minimum here, minimum, and to run the minimum here, we would just put in equal to min and then take the same column of data again for the model fit. And then what we find is we get a negative value and we should not get a negative value here because we're trying to predict a probability of default. So OLS here, ordinary least squares, is a kind of a fail. Um, it can be used... Uh, to give us some kind of guidance in terms of the to signal is there a positive negative relationship 